Hey everybody, uh, let's talk comic book film, X-Men, Days of Future Past, released a couple weeks ago on Blu-ray, um, I actually saw this on bootleg because I refused to see it in the movie theater because I had no hope for the movie. No and fucking it hope turned still. Kind of meh. All right, all right. This is the situation. If you saw the Wolverine, you know after that Magneto appeared in the airport to Charles. I mean to Wolverine. Him and Charles, who's alive again, which is not a surprise because if you've seen the end of X Men Three after the um credits, Charles con transferred his consciousness to um another body and I don't know how his face looks like the way it still does was it his brother his twin brother who anyway just all right that see this is why this movie is kind of days of future ass to me you know first off it bites um it, it pretty much takes Terminator storyline and give it an X-Men spin on it. Which means it's going to have bland action and heavy drama. What? What? It, you know I'm right. Anyway. So, somehow. Without any, any inklings of it in the past X-Men movies. The Sentinels in the future are slow. Come to, they come to power sometime. During the X-Men storyline, I guess, what is it, behind the scenes? You know, it's not happening. You know, in between movies, the X-Men fight Sentinels and we're not seeing them. Um, so somehow the Sentinels, now fully powered with Mystique's blood to adapt to any mutant power, which is dumb because Mystique only turns into a mutant. She don't take on any powers. Now, if this was made from Rogue's blood, which I bet it was, but because they deleted Anna Paquin out of the movie, um, that would make more sense. So anyway, these super-powered mutant, these super-powered sentinels are slaughtering the mutants, and now they're killing humans in the future because humans and mutants are the same. They create, you know, mutants are born from humans, so because they are human. So... Now, the, it's a pocket full of mutant resistance, and our key members are Storm, Holly Berry, um, play Storm, of course, Wolverine, um, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen as Magneto, um, Professor X, Storm, Wolverine, then we have Kitty, we have Colossus, and Iceman, played by the respected actors who've played them in the past. And um, somehow, magically, Kitty powers have evolved and all of a sudden, she's able to um, transfer a person's consciousness two days into the past. That's the most they can take, she said. Which, here we go. Insert plot point here. They, Wolverine can heal himself instantaneously. So guess who can take more than that? And guess who they're going to send in the past instead of Kitty being sent into a past by a telepath. If I'm, if my memory serves correct, in the original Days of Future past two-parter, um, Kitty goes back in the past. But no, of course we're gonna have Wolverine go past in the past because why? This is Fox X Men, which is pretty much the Wolverine show. So anyway, they want to stop this war going on with um again from the Simpsons. They want to stop this extinction level event which happened in 1973 yet was never talked about in any of the past X-Men movies at all by the way Trask is alive in X-Men 3 even though he was his assassination is what triggered this Sentinels movement he's alive in X-Men 3 and he's black but no just let it go this is X-Men this is Fox X-Men. Everything's inconsistent. No shit, Sherlock. And what a lame-ass excuse. This is why when I did the Batman movies and stuff, and when I um, talked about the Dark Knight Rises, and people just was like, no movie's perfect. We know no movie's perfect, but come on. Pretend like you give a shit about the source material to a bit. You don't gotta even follow it directly to a T, but Pretend you give a shit about the source material. So anyway, you know, 
Wolverine's the only one that can take um being transferred back. Uh, what? How many years? Um, fifty years or so. Um, it's like two thousand twenty-three or something, and Days of Future Past, and transferring back to um seventy-three. So yeah, about fifty years. Wolverine wakes up in his younger body, of course, with his bone claws, which going foreshadowing going up against metallic sentinels is a it's it's a it's a wise idea. So he goes um you know by request of future Charles and Magneto, he finds their younger versions. First he finds Professor Xavier and he finds Beast who in the future is dead. Um but now he finds younger Hank McCoy played by Nicholas Holt. And he finds Professor X in a bad state without his powers. And um it's because Beast made this serum that suppresses um mutant abilities, but it, a side effect it gives Professor Xavier um the ability to walk. But it turned him into he pretty much should be been a dope junkie because he he's basically slapping a vein and putting it in there. He looked like he on heroin. This was the seventies, so I think it was there was this like it was a heroin reference in a superhero movie without actually having to say dope or smack. So anyway, you know, he finds Professor Xavier who gave up the who gave up the good fight, you know. But you know, if you see him in the future, he's a X he he got the X Men, so you know eventually he's gonna get back into it. But this movie was just dramatical fodder, so we can have Wolverine. Of course, be the person who tells young know, Professor Xavier, you have to, you know, him, you you know, you got to believe again. You sent me here, blah, blah, blah. You know, without Days of Future Past, Professor Xavier gets back on a horse anyway. But maybe now, because of the events that magically popped up with the Sentinels, and I say magically popped up, maybe things would be future going you know, things would be different in the future going forth with X-Men Apocalypse. But this movie here, just, it, 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 it creates more what the fuck moments. And it's going to create more bullshit in the future, I bet. But anyway, they find Professor Xavier now. They know, Professor Xavier knows which, um, where Magneto is. And guess what? Um... They're going to break him out. And he's being held in a plastic prison. Yes, we get that. So I guess Professor Xavier is the one who taught them, told him how to contain Magneto. So anyway, they need to get him out now all of a sudden. And Wolverine mentioned something that he has never mentioned. He said, I've known a guy who was very fast. He would be young at this time. He would be very young now. So you telling me... We have a 50-something, we have a 60-something-year-old Quicksilver in the Fox X-Men storyline. A 60-something-year-old Quicksilver. But now we're going to have Evan P Peters play him as a teenager in the past. Okay, that's the only part I'm mad about. Evan Peters was cool as Quicksilver, which gave be probably one of the best scenes of um, Days of Future Past is when he uses his super speed to save Magneto, Charles, and Wolverine from the guards and their plastic guns. And I like the little nod that he was oh, so um, Quicksilver, says, Quicksilver says to Magneto, Oh, so you um you can control metal. He like my mother knew somebody who can control metal. Giving a nod to the people who know that their father and son. If whoever watched this video didn't know that. So anyway, uh they get Magneto out and once again Magneto resumes being a dick again. You know? So he has his ulterior motives and I'm thinking, did younger I think older Magneto knew what he was capable of. Of course he knew what he was capable of, but why would he have himself free back then? You know, he, you know, did the events change then? I think the events, I think really the events changed when he committed the acts and he modified the Sentinels 
to you know to have metallic parts that he can manipulate because the sentinels were all plastic they at least trash thought about that because he knew magneto was one of his greatest was one of the greatest mutant threats out there and because he studied he then dissected and murdered x-men that we've seen in if you um first class like angel dead emma dead i hear banshee is dead uh he i heard he is azel is dead is it did he knock up mystique and she gave the baby up from adoption what's gonna happen where nightcrawler is gonna come from we don't know this is bullshit i'm talking about here and um we, we really don't know what's going on here. And then we get Curtis Stryker, which is, again, he looks even younger than he did in X-Men Origins, which took place around the same time. See? But anyway, um, let's get to the problem why this happened. Mystique shot Trask in the head. All right, she shot Trask in the head because of what he's done to her, to her, um, her kind, to her friends, to the mutant kind, and he, his, he been pushing for the Sentinels to be created, and her exposing herself to the world created this whole. She, she, she's the reason why. Even though she meant well, she's the reason why, and even. Magneto and all his dickery has been trying to convince her she won't listen. Professor X, she definitely ain't listening to him. So, I really didn't like Mystique in this movie. She was so fucking stubborn and stupid. Just, I guess to create tension. It was dumb though. It was really dumb. It, 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 it. Anyway, get, get. Let's let's fast forward to the end. All right, uh, Magneto. Found the schematics to um he you know he found the schematics I guess Mystique stole to the Sentinels and um he started making modifications or whatever how he got the schematics I don't really fucking care at this point he got the schematics to the Sentinels he added magnet magnetic metallic parts to the um to the Sentinels so he can manipulate once they come out and stuff and all of a sudden he goes from being an ally to Charles and Wolverine trying to stop a terrible, terrible future to being the same old fucking Magneto we know. And I think this is why future Magneto, when he was dying from the injury, I think this is why he apologized to Charles because I think the events that happened, that were happening back then, caught up to him mentally, just like he caught up to Wolverine um, when he woke up and 2023 changed and how he woke up in 2023 changes because they got to mystique at the last point and she um she you know she basically um didn't kill trask and she out she basically outed trask for being responsible for the things he have with mutant kind basically so the sentinels didn't happen all right, and that terrible future didn't happen at the last exact moment, just when Kitty and Professor X were about to be obliterated, just like all the, the X Men were being obliterated in the future. It was a snuff film, and I was not entertained by it at all. We seen Storm get killed, like she get impaled. We saw Bishop, who can absorb powers, get blown in pits. We seen, um, Sunspot get his neck snapped. We seen Blink get skew skewered. Uh, we seen Iceman get burned up. We seen him before get his neck broken and he get crushed and his head get stomped on. And it, it was just a snuff film. It was for it was supposed to be for shock value. It, should, it did nothing for me. All right, just like this movie really did nothing for the timeline for me. It was supposed to fix things. It left me with more questions, all right? So, now, going forth, we wake up back. We wake Wolverine gets fucked up by Magneto and gets thrown in the water somewhere. And, um, it's up to Professor Xavier who stopped taking the drug and he's in the chair again. 
and he um get, he gets through the mystique. Everybody gets through to her, and she walks away, basically, without killing, without killing. She saved the president from Magneto. That's how it's gonna look. And then Charles let Magneto go away too because he because his future self told him don't give up on him. I get that. All right, so you know. Wolverine wakes up in the future with his adamantium again, and he wakes up without any recollection of what happened in Days of Future Past because he got, I guess he got cut off his mental feed with Kitty got cut off or so, and it, I'm confused about that too. Um, not really. It's just that I'm running out of time here to explain it, but he wakes up. And Professor X now, you know, Charles Xavier, um, now um, Patrick Stewart again, um, it was like, remember what you told me, don't give up, you know, be here for these mutants, we're gonna all come together and we need you to be there for us, we need you to guide us, you know, and he remembered everything that Wolverine told him, so we see James Marsden again as Cyclops. We see Famke Jensen again as Jane. We see um, Old Blue Beast. Um, we see Kelsey Grammer as Beast. We see now Kitty and um, Peter. Colossus seem to be together like in the comic book. And we see Rogue and um, Bobby back together. And um, everything seems okay. Like it was in X-Men 2 and 3. Like, and at the beginning, you know, X-Men 2. Um, so, at the, you know, roll credits, blah, 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 we see Apocalypse. All right? A mutant we've never seen before in the X-Men timeline. So, now leaves the question, does the events of Apocalypse also pop up out of nowhere? In this, or have we seen this team of X Men who's been through it, done it all, and Apocalypse? They beat the Apocalypse threat. And you know why I say that? Because we had no foreshadowing that these events with Trask and the Sentinels were going to happen. Now, if they were being planted from X Men One, and we seen Trask in that movie, or somebody trying to continue Trask's work, Days of Future Past would made more sense to me, but it don't make any sense to me because it comes out of nowhere like I said earlier if I haven't said it already in X-Men 3 Trask was alive and well and there was no sense in those being mentioned all right and he was played by Bill Duke a black man but all of a sudden by days of future past Trask was Peter Dinklage who got killed back in 1973 while proposing the Sentinel plan to hunt down these mutants that he had evidence existed, but everybody thought he was insane. Until Mystique showed her blue ass and proved him right and caused this whole event. So, excuse my French, that dumb bitch started this whole thing, all right? So, anyway, is X-Men Apocalypse gonna be out of nowhere? Like, oh, well, we've never faced a threat like Apocalypse before. Yeah. I hope so because it's supposed to be in the, it's going to be in the 80s. I hope that's where it's for essential to the plot. But I wonder if the 2023 X Men we saw at the end of Days of Future Past knew of Apocalypse. Did they survive Apocalypse? Apocalypse is no fucking joke. So I don't know. This it just begs to it it begs to be questioned. I don't know what's going to happen. And on um, Days of Future Past overall just felt like going through the motions, you know, it just, it didn't feel the sense you to the timeline of it, I mean, it was supposed to set things right, it just left me with more questions, and it just wasn't that good of a movie to me, it was good by X-Men standards, but that's not saying much over at Fox, you know, so, I don't know what you think about the movie, uh, you can comment, let me know, but... I hope you enjoyed this spoiler talk on it and my 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 review and my opinion on it. So I'll catch you later, guys. See you later.
hit me up. Just leave a comment. I'm just mind fucked.